Officially, the disappearance of Teamster leader Jimmy Hoffa back in 1975 has never been solved. The FBI believes Hoffa was murdered by mobsters, but who was the trigger man? Well, tonight we hear from a man who says he's the one who pulled the trigger, even though he and Hoffa were close friends. The yeah, I-Team's George Knapp here with an exclusive uh, detail on that. But Dave and Paula, Mafia hitman Frank Sheeran had a euphemism for murder. Whenever he killed someone, he said they went to Australia, meaning down under the ground. The murder of Hoffa was likely related to what the mob was doing with millions of Teamster dollars here in Las Vegas. Tonight, Frank Sheeran speaks from the grave about how Jimmy Hoffa died. That I was not then guilty, nor am I guilty now. When he emerged from prison in the 1970s, former Teamster President Jimmy Hoffa announced he wanted his job back, even though he'd been warned by Mafia associates to back off. The mob was concerned that Hoffa might reveal the connection between Teamster loans to Las Vegas casinos and the cash being skimmed from those casinos. Hoffa had to go. On the last day of his life, hours before he was killed, Hoffa placed a frantic call to Las Vegas. This FBI telex shows he phoned the Dunes Hotel to speak to his lawyer, Maura Schenker, who'd bought into the dunes with a Teamster loan of his own. Just a few weeks earlier, Hoffa had visited Las Vegas to meet with Schenker face to face and with casino owner Mo Dalitz, another recipient of Teamster money. Hoffa finally agreed to a sit down with his mafia nemesis, Tony Provenzano, presumably to work out their differences. They were to meet at the Red Fox restaurant in suburban Detroit. Hoffa insisted that his trusted muscle, Frank the Irishman Sheeran, be there to back him up. In mob slang, Sheeran painted houses. That is, he killed people, 25 to 30 hits in all, most carried out at the orders of mafia kingpin Russell Buffalino. If, if, if a guy's going to talk about uh, he's going to do something, he, he's not going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to go out and whack this guy or something like that. You know, he, he just say you're going to paint a house, you know. Late in his life, as he was dying of cancer, Frank Sheeran finally told the story about Hoffa's murder to his longtime lawyer, Charles Brandt, who's written a book, I Heard You Paint Houses. During the last 31 years, there have been others who've claimed knowledge of what happened to Hoffa. Sheeran appears to be the real deal. So they selected uh, Sheeran for the hit. And Sheeran said to me, you don't say no. You, you don't say no to Russell Buffalino about anything. If I said no to Russell, Jimmy would have been just as dead and I'd have gone to Australia with him. And so he was in a position where he had to do it or, or he'd have been killed. It took years before Sheeran told his lawyer everything about the Hoffa hit. Sheeran had already been mentioned as a possible suspect in a few Hoffa books. He told Brandt he wanted to tell the truth about that day. Gave me chills. I'm looking at him and I go, he killed Hoffa. In recorded interviews, Sheeran slowly filled in the blanks. He and Brandt retraced the events, starting at the restaurant. Sheeran said he was one of three men who arrived in this car to pick up Hoffa, who got into the back seat. The meeting had been moved to a house, they told Hoffa, this house on Beaverland Street, a short distance away. Hoffa walked into the house with Sheeran behind him, and Sheeran put two bullets into the back of Hoffa's head. There's plenty to corroborate Sheeran's story. For one thing, Hoffa was cautious. He wouldn't have climbed into the car unless someone he knew was there, someone like Sheeran. From the beginning, the FBI considered Sheeran a prime suspect. Agents have tried everything to get him to talk. When they first searched the car, police dogs detected Hoffa's scent in the back seat, just where Sheeran said Hoffa sat. Agents also found a human hair, but it wasn't until 25 years later that DNA testing confirmed it was Hoffa's hair. As a young prosecutor, Las Vegas attorney Stan Hunterton wrote and defended the motion that allowed the government to seize the car and preserve the evidence. He I think Sheeran's so, confession rings uh, true. I believe that Hoffa was lured into the car, which we seized. There had to be somebody, uh, and perhaps more than one person, in the car that he trusted. He had to be killed quickly, which means fairly nearby, and that's also consistent with uh, Sheeran's uh, confession. In 2003, days away from dying, Sheeran gave Brandt the okay to go forward with the book. Brandt believes the hitman was trying to reconcile for murdering his friend, Jimmy Hoffa. He's the best man I ever knew.
If Frank Sheeran killed Hoffa and it looks that way, what happened to the body? Turns out the trail leads here to Las Vegas. The answer tomorrow night at 11 o'clock. Charles Brandt, the author of the book about Sheeran, is holding a book signing tomorrow night at 7 at the Reading Room at Mandalay Bay. And we have some links on our website. If you want more information, that's LasVegasNow.com. Any other suspect who might fit that bill, though? Uh, no one's even close, really. Mm. There, there's one mob figure named Sal Brigulio who was high on the list mm. of suspects for a while. He was suspected also of cooperating with the FBI. He was murdered on a New York sidewalk in 1978, and the man who pulled the trigger was Frank Sheeran. Kind of blows that giant stadium thing, but what the heck. Yeah. All right, thanks, George.